his day a tag banger. It was just, he did it. No, he didn't, he didn't care. I think the, the word taggers is offensive. I think that, you know, we're writers, we're graffiti writers. And that's it, you know what I mean? Like, I don't like the word tagger. I don't like the word tag banger. I don't use it at all. During that tag banging era, my apologies for using that phrase, but during that era, we hear that many graffiti crews were forced to merge into gangs. How do you manage your crew to stay out of those politics? Well, because we didn't set up shop, right? We didn't set up shop somewhere. So the local gang in that area couldn't find us hanging out on one street and then, you know, jump us all in and, and, and force us to join the gangs. We didn't, it, we moved around. We pushed it, we kept on moving, kept on moving, kept on moving. So there was no way for them to get a hold of. And the ones that did do that paid for it. You know what I mean? They had joined gangs and there were their torpedoes, you know. They were like the youngsters of those days were the ones that put in the most work and now they're you know, they they've been in locked up for now thirty years, right? You know, I see a lot of dudes come out of prison because I've tattooed a lot of people and they would tell me like, damn man, I missed all my life. All this fun stuff I see you did and the adventures you did, and you know, I got locked up because I did a drive by at 17, 18, you know, 15 sometimes. Like, California was throwing away children quick. California was one of the first and only states that was putting children in jail for life. You know, you're not, if you don't even have the ability to handle alcohol, you have to be 21. It's because you haven't grown as an adult yet. So the decisions you make at, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, you shouldn't be trying as an adult, you know what I mean? You're not really all there, you know? And then you, you add the the era of your, your your homies and everybody in the neighborhood thinking that whole, that whole machismo shit, and it just turns crazy. And then, you know, people watch this interview, like, oh, but you did a lot of crazy shit too. Like, yeah, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not saying I'm the smartest person on the planet. I, I deal with a lot of crazy shit too, but again, if you met me 10 years ago, five years ago, 20 years ago, I'm not the same person I was. And, and neither are you, I don't think, you know. Only the most stubborn, stubborn, angers, the most angry and the most stubborn people are still the same for 30, 40, 30, 20 years, you know what I mean? Like, we all evolve, humans evolve. In your opinion, why does this era in graffiti fade away? Or is graffiti just as dangerous today? Well, yeah, I mean, it wasn't an era. It's just people doing things. You know, danger in Los Angeles is always going to be here. You know, people, people say a lot of shit that come out of town because they never go east of the 405. So they don't really know LA. They've never been to South Central, they've never been to Watts, Compton, they've never been to Long Beach, they've never been to East LA, Portal Heights. They don't know nothing about, you know, the low bottoms or, you know, downtown LA, Linwood, Hang Park, you know, they don't know nothing about Maywood, they don't know nothing about any of those places. Pacoima, you know, even San Fernando, that's good too, you know what I mean? They don't know anything about those things, you know? So they, they say that it ain't dangerous, but you can get got anywhere. It just depends. If fate has it, you can get killed in Beverly Hills. It doesn't matter. It, it depends on the person that's there and what happens, you know, and how you deal with the situation. I've had, I forgot how many times I've had guns pointed at me or I've been shot at. That's how much has happened. I forgot. You know, I'll bump into somebody I haven't seen it in a long time. They'll be like, hey, yo, remember that time we were just like hanging out at Tommy's? And I pulled up and saw bags in the shit. And I was like, oh, no, it did happen. I don't about it. Because that's LA. And if you live long enough in LA, two things will happen. You'll live long enough to change your life, or you'll live long enough to become a villain. Dr. Toombs, you've had a long history. You've traveled around the world for graffiti. Is violence in graffiti the same in other countries, or do you just see this in Los Angeles? I mean, you know, people beat each other up over basketball, bro. Humans are violent. I mean, it's not, you can't say 
graffiti makes you violent. Right? It's just the way it is. But you know, there's other countries that deal with violence differently than America. I think America is a very violent place. Our history is violence. You know, we came here and we murdered all the indigenous people. We took their lands and we, we, we brought an entire race of humans from another country and turned them into slaves. You know, it's a very violent place, America. When you go to other countries, they'll be the first ones to let you know how violent, but also Europe is violent. I mean, look at all the wars, you know, that Europe is, but I think it's because they had war on their soil that they learned how to deal with it a little better than we have here. But again, you could get beat up playing golf and you disrespect somebody. I mean, you could get beat up playing video games. We, again, villainize graffiti because of the culture of Los Angeles gangs. And so we use terms like tag banging and we're like, oh, is it violent over there? Over here, dude, it's fine anywhere, bro. You get beat up from playing chess. <laughs> if you're pissed off your opponent, it's just humans, dude. It's just what humans do. It doesn't, you know, I, for one, I don't go out and decide, oh, you know what would be cool right now. You know what I mean? I deal with what happened already or what I perceive as a threat and I deal with it accordingly. And that's it, you know? Dr. Toombs, as we come out of this dark era in graffiti, TKO, TKO reaches... But I, like I said, I don't view it that way. I, I see. see it like an era. It's it, it is what it is, and whoever survived it, you know, they're better for it. It teaches you how to be who you are. You know, you cannot be, you cannot grow as a human being without pain. You can't grow as a human being without strife. Because everything's easy. Why would you want to accomplish anything? You wouldn't. You just stay at home, you know, watching TV and eating bonbons all day. 